Roughly 10 years ago, I had a divorce with my ex-husband, who had previously already experienced divorce. The reason for the divorce was the bullying that my husband's child did to me. My ex-husband and I were more than 10 years apart, so his ex-wife's daughter, Sally, was close in age with me that we could be sisters. I do understand her feelings how she wouldn't want a young woman like me to be her father's wife, but although she was kind and smiley toward me before marriage, she suddenly became a bully after marriage. At that time, Sally's mother had her custody, thus we weren't living together. But because we lived at a place only 30 minutes away by train, she often came to visit. But still, we didn't only have tea together when she came. She would come into the house with her spare key and throw away the food I made and disrupt my peaceful life. I remember feeling frantic when she poured ink all over the precious kimono that my grandmother made for me. Of course, I tried to talk to my husband about it many times, but he ignored the situation. I tried to let it go, thinking it was his daughter, but it was too much that I could handle. It's either you make her stop bullying me, or you take away the spare key from her. When I told him that strongly, he grinned slightly and said, I remember thinking that his smile then looked eerily evil, and although his ex-wife had custody of his daughter, I thought it was strange that he thought that she and I should have equal privileges in the household. When I realized that, the love I had for my husband disappeared. Even after that, he wouldn't take away the spare key from her, and the bullying got worse. When I bought a new outfit, she would cut it into pieces with scissors. She even poked a hole in my bicycle tires many times. Although they weren't expensive things, I started getting more and more upset after she did that a countless number of times. Although that continued, my husband didn't do anything about it. Unable to endure it anymore, I got a divorce from him. I only lived with my husband for less than six months, but because most of my belongings were damaged by Sally, I only had roughly one-fourth of my stuff left. After that, I cut ties with my ex-husband, and naturally, Sally stopped interfering with me as well. Of course, I demanded compensation money from my ex-husband and Sally when we got a divorce, and I got the amount I needed. A few years later, I had an encounter with a man at work and got remarried to him. It was his first time getting married, but his parents were good to me as well. We are also blessed with two children. We lived a peaceful life together with no trouble in particular, and my children were successfully growing older. However, one day, Sally, who called my parents' house to get to me, contacted me. Since we already got a divorce, Sally and I were unrelated. I didn't know what she wanted, but because she persistently called my parents' house, I reluctantly decided to get in contact with her. Sally said, I'm getting married. Both my parents, my ex-husband and his ex-wife, passed away, so I want you to participate in the wedding as my mother. So she said. I couldn't believe she had the audacity to say that. Besides, I got a divorce with my ex-husband so many years ago, and she was no doubt a stranger to me. I found it ridiculous that she came to me for help. But because both of her parents were gone, she thought that her fiancé's parents would be suspicious of her, and she wanted me to act like her mother at the ceremony. Sally told me that all I had to do was participate in the wedding and greet her fiancé's parents, and that it won't be too troublesome. But honestly, that itself was already really troublesome. What reason did I have to take off from work and participate in a wedding for the girl who treated me so badly before? Because I thought so, I answered saying, no way, you and I are strangers now. With that, I hung up the phone. However, she continued calling my parents again and again and they were troubled. I told her that I would tell her fiance everything if she didn't stop calling my parents. Are you going to hold a grudge like that forever? I was just a kid she said. By the way, Sally was a high schooler back then. She wasn't exactly a kid. I'm sure she knew what was right and wrong as well. So I told her, I still haven't forgiven you for what you did in the past, and if you really think that I should let go of it because you were just a kid, I can tell your fiancé about it, right? She replied with, I just want you to greet them as my mother. Gosh. I wondered why I had to do that much for her. I told her that if I were to meet them, I would bring my lawyer with me and show them all the evidence I had of her bullying me in the past. Even though I said that much, Sally didn't stop calling us. Thus, I warned her once more. That's fine already. I got it, so just come, she said. Oh, so it's fine. After that, Sally suggested to pretend that my house was her parents' house 
but I strictly refused. Although she agreed to that, she made me reserve an expensive restaurant. I brought the evidence I had, along with my lawyer, to the meeting. I was able to ask the same lawyer who helped me with the divorce. After I greeted her fiance and his parents, I told them I was married to Sally's father for less than half a year, and she isn't my daughter nor relative. If anything, she was the cause of the divorce. She bullied me like crazy, and I don't want to interfere with her anymore. I only came because she persistently calls me, and it's causing my family so much trouble. I came here to make her stop. After that, Sally's face turned bright red, and she screamed, What are you talking about? This isn't what we agreed to. You're the one who said, It's fine, so come. That's not what I meant. I took it that way, though. Saying that, I showed all the evidence I had of Sally bullying me. Pictures of my belongings that she damaged, the claim for the payment of damages in the receipt, as well as the letters that Sally's mother, my ex-husband's former wife, and her grandmother, my ex-husband's former mother-in-law, wrote. The letter from her mother was one that we couldn't tell if it were either an apology or anger, but the letter from her grandmother said, Sally is just like her mother and has a twisted personality. I'm so embarrassed to have a granddaughter like her. She wrote words of disgust towards Sally. I bet Sally was really shocked. She caused a scene and her fiance's parents looked pale. Well, of course, a random unrelated person is sitting right in front of them. I told Sally, as she acted hysterical, that although you've continued to call my parents until now and demanded that I participate in the meeting as your mother, I will take legal action if this continues. And with that, I tried to go home. However, Sally said, but I'm pregnant. I couldn't help but snicker a little. I said, did you think that all you've done until now will be forgiven just because you have a child? Why are you so mean to me? She said as she started crying. <laughs> idiot. Then what was all that you've done to me in the past? You threw away the meals I cooked you and you cut my clothes into pieces. And you don't call that mean? I think it's even worse, no? Hearing what I said, Sally's fiance was taken aback. You're terrible. Why would you do this to me? I just wanted you to pretend to be my mother. Why did you think I would do that? It's because of you that our family was messed up and that we became unrelated. And what reason is there for me to participate in a wedding as your mother? Rather, why do I have to care about how you feel? After that, I collected the proof I showed them and went home with my lawyer. While I was walking away, Sally wept and looked disastrous. After that, I heard they broke off the engagement. Furthermore, I found out later she actually wasn't pregnant. She just thought she was because her period came late. She believed that she was pregnant without even getting a checkup and hurried to get married. She got her period the next day after the incident and found out she actually wasn't pregnant. Her fiance's parents demanded that they break off the engagement and claimed for compensation money. Because of that, Sally made a huge debt and came to me. It's all your fault that I can't get married. Take responsibility, she said but was ignored by my lawyer who saw that coming. And on this occasion, I gave my parents cell phones and made them throw away their home phone. Well, my parents did take time thinking about it because it was a phone they had been using for a while, but because they were tired of Sally's persistent calls, they finally agreed in getting rid of it. Thanks to that, I have no worries about Sally bothering my parents anymore. Good. When I got a divorce, I didn't think about getting revenge at Sally, who was still a high schooler back then. However, I didn't think she would voluntarily fall into doom ten years after that. But honestly, it's true I had a grudge all these years, and I feel very refreshed now. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more!